Hi, I'm Stargazer or I am known as Stargazer. I've been in this business for a long time. Um, I've been a host or an anchor, radio TV anchor of ABS DZMM and my program ran for 13 years, actually short of 13 years. And, uh, it was because of the closing of the station which terminated everyone. So um, for almost 13 years, I was bringing Pinoy vibes to different households and talking about esoterics, talking about the paranormal, making it have more sense, more meaning, more scientific explanation to a lot of things. I was re-educating people na hindi lang laging uh, kulam, barang, na hindi laging paranormal ang usapan, but we try to put in explanation, a specific and tangible explanation with regards to things. We cannot disclose or, or we cannot dispel the fact that there are really paranormal events. But we will. Uh, the program aims to explain first in a scientific manner everything that is non-conventional. Uh, okay, so uh, Pinoy Vibes was born in uh, 2000, actually it's roughly between 2006 and 2007 when I was invited to guest in different DZMM shows. Um, they saw me guesting in different ABS and even GMA shows, so they got interested in, in taking me in. So what is my educational background? I graduated from Ateneo de Manila with uh, a degree in AB Communication Arts and minor in Psychology. So that was the time um, when Father Bulatao Jaime Bulatao was very much, uh, very famous or infamous with his remote viewing classes and everything that he handled. He holds crystal balls and does all the paranormal stuff. So in short, I was mentored by him. So I was one of the few that talagang one-on-one -on -one mentoring until um, I graduated from college uh and pursued different disciplines like i went into transcendental meditation and during college there were not enough books to talk about the paranormal so what i did was really something like kahabulin mo yung ananda marga to learn techniques meditation sa kubao you would talk to anyone in the field that was the time when mentoring was very very strong People right, uh, people and you know, young people right now are very, very. Um, I can say blessed that you have a lot of materials on hand, and there are a lot of teachers. But again, I would say, read and learn with caution. Okay, so was I really a psychic? I call myself a psychic. Yes, I am a psychic. What is really psychism? Psychism for me is part of the esoterics, but there is a pseudoscience behind it. The pseudoscience is more of the paranormal psychology, which unofficially they consider as part of science. But in paranormal psychology, these abilities, clairvoyance, clairaudience, and all the clairsentience, these are all heightened senses that we develop in time it can be inborn it can be already developed it can be developed it can be sharpened with certain uh, tools and uh, techniques so this is simply for me this is simply the brain functioning well normally we just use 10 percent of our brain but as we go on if you um, sharpen your skills you tend to sense more why is it that deaf people can hear more quote unquote hear more because they have heightened other senses to realize what is in front of them they would know if there is a big sound if they cannot hear they can feel because they would feel it with the vibrations so it's, it's as simple as that so how do you heighten this because this is in paranormal psychology okay so as a kid i was already known for seeing things and i'm kind of weird uh, i know things 
beyond my age. Like for example, at five years old or six years old, I would know something about herbals, uh, herbs saying that this leaf can cure wounds. So there are some indications already that I was something like kakaiba or weird na bata. And then I would start talking about things I do not know, things beyond me, like a great, great, great grandmother, I would say the name. How would I know that? So people before regard it as something unexplicable. So you have to look into how to explain the matter. So I delved into paranormal psychology. I got interested into sharpening my, my gifts. What is this? A gift of seeing, the gift of hearing, smell. Probably I have everything, even clear gustans. Sometimes I taste things that nobody can. Don't you taste it? There's something different? Or can you smell this? It's something different. When people do not smell the smell of smoke, I do smell it. If I can smell something like something is rotting, they don't. And later on, you find out that somebody was murdered or somebody got killed there. So I, I can smell. It's it's called you smell death. Okay, so that's how interesting uh, we're getting into. Now, after college, I told myself that I'd rather focus on the family business, the family corporation. And I am a business consultant. So I, I went into market research. I'm a market research executive. And I can do... Um, focus group discussions, feasibility studies, and I uh, was once the uh, one of the corporate people, corporate planning officers of officer of a uh, real estate company, and um, it's fun being in the corporate world. However, there's such a thing as destiny. So even if you say that you'd like to live normally, I was not living normally. I was also a government consultant. And how did I use these gifts? For example, if I go inside a government office, I would know right away who to approach to because I would look at the aura and see whether that is that person, um, something like cunning or so, or he would, would he be open if I talk to him? So I used my skills. Actually, I told myself I won't use my skills, but I was really using my skills. Even in college, I wouldn't study, but I still got my A's, my B pluses. And uh, most of my, my, my classmates would attest that she never studies. I would just study 30 minutes before an exam. And I just look at exactly what my intuition says that will come out during the test. Okay, so that's a gift of foresight. So that's how I use it. And they said that uh, you uh, are cheating. I said, no, I wasn't cheating. I was simply looking at and feeling what will come out in the exam. Although there were times also that I failed, especially with history, is because I knew that it will come out like, for example, the fall of whatever, uh, the battle of like this, and there are dates that you have to remember or memorize. I don't like memorizing things, so I would fail. But I knew it will come out. So that's how it is. So you can't use your gift forever. Okay, you really have to study. So after, after college, when I started working, uh, I got married, have children, had children, and um, it is difficult because when you have the gift, you would read everything, you would see everything. And in relationships, you would know if your husband is doing something else. And the, how the story goes, uh, I got separated because, of course, I caught him red-handed. So maybe that's, a, that's an advantage, but it's also a disadvantage on my part because each time I look right now at the person, I am too worried. I am too careful because you see all the plus and the negatives. But you have to control that. Okay, so that's who I am right now. Uh, I am still a host with uh, another program of ABS. And I still, it's, I think it's my advocacy to be teaching people what to believe in or the alternative to believe in. I cannot, I cannot impose, but I just open their eyes that the unexplained can be explained. Practitioners like me should be able to inspire, should be able to lift people from the rut they are in. 
everybody, I cannot say nobody, everybody at one point feels desolate or desperate or even with depression. You are depressed. You can't go out. I can't go out. So what do I do? I cope up. Now, people do not have the same uh, coping mechanism as I have. So I would turn into music. I would turn into doing something else. But people are not creative. Not all are creative. So what do you do? They come to you. They ask you for answers. They ask you for advice. So the role of somebody, of a practitioner, should be able to positively lift that person. You know what? Sometimes it's hard when you can see. Like me, I can see if that person is going to the dumps or is having a difficult time and the difficult period will be longer. So how now would you turn something negative into something positive? By telling them reality, but making them lighter and seeing the positive side of it. If you cannot do anything about the situation, what do you do? Of course, you have to be honest with the person. But being honest with the person also comes with the responsibility on helping that person turn this negative incident into something positive. How to learn from the process. And you have to offer them alternatives on how to cope with this negativity. Second, in this pandemic season, you have to be very practical. Occultist. Don't tell them that they will see roses and lollipops and even flowers let's be honest if their company is folding offer them something else you cannot say just to make them feel good you cannot say that you will be all right you can say that you can be all right by offering them suggestions or alternative during the pandemic never promise also something that will never be Never also tell them you need this and you need that and you take advantage of that situation that the person is desperate for them to patronize your services. You never do that. In fact, you know, during the pandemic season, practitioners should be more flexible with their time. If they paid you one hour, go an extra mile, give them an additional 30 minutes. Probably they just needed someone to talk to. Somebody just to let out their negativity. So it is frustrating at times to hear many practitioners or occultists taking advantage of the pandemic to sell them products that will, quote unquote, take away all the bad luck or malas. You can offer them like you can work on crystals, you can work on certain things that there is value. But telling them to buy a potion, telling them to buy this magical thing is something you know that you'll never elevate the situation because the pandemic is there. We have to be realistically positive. Offer them something else, offer them words, offer them assurance, offer them inspiration. That's more important. Now, the elections are near. As a cultist, what do you do? Shall we sit there? Shall you? This is a very tricky part. Sometimes it is difficult to say what you will see because you know, for example, that somebody else will win or somebody else will do this and do that. I think the way to guide people right now is tell them to follow their heart, to see what is right and just. Never impose on your political beliefs. That's why with my practice, I never, I never mix my political beliefs. We talk objectively. This is what, and I never ask people to believe in what I believe in. They should make their choice. Because you see, it is, this is already the practice of choices and we only get what we deserve. The thing is, the reason why they come to us is because they want, they want guidance. You can always guide them with words like, is it just? Is it fair? What will it do? What will he do to our country? Guide them in a more positive manner, not to impose on what you think 
should be the outcome. Otherwise, you will be manipulating the energies. Okay, my advice to young people or those who come after me is number one is have humility in your heart. No one is ever a master. No one is ever an expert or someone up there. This is not about hierarchy. This is about not about who, come, who comes first or who's better or who's the best. You know, being in this field, everyone has its their own unique talent. So bank on it. Focus on competing with yourself. Not it I I hate hearing how to be you, Paul. Don't be me. Be you. You have to be you. Hone your gifts properly. Don't forget. Don't forget humility. And keep your two feet on the ground and your head on top of your shoulders. Why is it that? Your head should be here and not, you know, at the level of your heart. So it means you should never be swayed by emotions. For young practitioners, please listen to wisdom. You don't say that one is old and one is going out, but you listen to the mistakes they have made and try to do better. You don't look at the mistakes to bash a person. You look at the mistake other people make so that you won't do it. They made mistakes because they're human and you will make mistakes. Always remember that you will also make mistakes. That's why humility is very important. For you to learn, you need to make a mistake. Don't say that you will not make mistakes. So if, if that mistake is committed by another, learn from it. And never bash a person because the law of energies will always say what you throw out to the universe will come back thousandfold. Always remember that you will always be in that situation or you might step into that situation. So you have to be kind. Kindness beget kindness. Kindness, if it begets bashing, just let it be. Because the law of the cause and effect will always take place to the young ones please listen to wisdom and those who have gone before you i listen to the words of my grandmother even though she's already in another dimension i listen i take everything that was told by father bulato or that everything father bulato taught me I listen, even if they say it pertains to the 70s and the 80s, but it talks about life. What you should be listening is to how to become a good human being. So young practitioners, be kind, be humble, be realistically positive, and most of all, be honest. So, uh, I am Stargazer. I am a psychic. I am an aura reader. I don't deal with trivial things. I clear negativity. My forte is really clearing energies. So, if you come to me to talk about small things in life, probably I will not entertain you. But give me everything that's heavy. Give me everything. It's, it's probably you're having a problem or a choice in life that you cannot make then come to me. I will be able to help you. Now, I have a program right now, which is a continuation of Pinoy Vibes. It's on Kumu. It's a different platform. So it's under FYE channel. For um, This is under ABS-CBN, FYE channel. It starts every Sunday at 8 in the evening and ends around 11 or 11.30. So I talk about different subject matter on the paranormal and also about life so i put things in order i put uh, people in the right frame of mind to understand why things happen to them so it is beyond being too sp spiritual or too evangelist you no know? um, the program aims to be more realistically pos positive and also explaining also the paranormal events in life 
Okay, so that's Pinoy Vibes, Sundays, 8 to 11.30 p.m. I also have a website, which is www.stargazer.ph, FB page, which is Stargazer Philippines, Instagram, it's also Stargazer Philippines. So you can find me there. Thank you, and I hope, please, I'm inviting you to join uh, Esoterica. You learn a lot from them. Be open, be intelligently open. <laughs>